Hello and welcome back to Jimbox PC Builds. Today it's time to add another cooler to the Cooler League. So without further ado, let's have a look at the cooler that we're going to add to the League. The cooler I'm going to add is the Scythe Fuma 2. This is a cooler that's been looked at by a lot of reviewers. Um, it's an interesting cooler because it's not that expensive at $60. It's comparable to, say, the uh, Noctua cooler, the NHU-12S. Um, in terms of price, but for that price you get two fans, which is very, very interesting. So um, without further ado, let's get it on the test bed and have a look at how the installation goes. And I'll let you know my thoughts on the installation once we go through it. Okay, on to the install. So the first part of the install is you've got a you've got the old plate that comes through the bottom of the motherboard, which is fairly common these days and has been the same with a lot of the other um, coolers that I've installed. First thing you have to do is put a thermal pad on the plate. The next part is to have these barrel washers. Now, one side's got rubber on, one side hasn't. You need to make sure that the rubber side goes down. Once you put that on, then you've got a little nut that goes on top that screws it in. I'm doing one on the corner first to make sure it holds it in place for putting the rest of them on. I'm going to do the opposite corner next. Now I've got to take those nuts back off again because there is in fact a bar that needs to go on. So now I've got place pushed it through and the washers are on, I'm going to put the bars on. There's a big bar here and it goes on like so. There we are and now that's on I can then screw these back on. So that's one side done, now I'm going to do the other side. Now the dimples that are on the inside, they point towards the CPU. The screwdriver that they include is very helpful. There we go, nice even pressure on all four. Now that's done, I can re-screw the motherboard back in. And it's also worth noting that the screwdriver that they include is ma has got a mag magnets. Now I'm not going to put the fans on until the actual cooler is installed. So as always, oh, make sure you always remove the film from the bottom of the cooler. As always, I'm going to use the Noctua thermal paste that I've been using in all of the uh, cooler testing that I've done. Again, nice solid P shape. So there's a bracket already pre-installed on the cooler. So I just have to line it up. Got to be careful of the VRM. In the back, so it looks like I'm going to have to do it this way. Spring mounted screws, which helps. And we're going to do four on each side until pressure's even. So now that the screws are all, uh, all in, it's time to mount the uh, fans. This cooler comes with two fans rather than the normal one. So I've got to install the two. There's no direction arrows on the fans, which will make life easier, but I'm going to do the full thinner fan first on the outside. The actual clips themselves go in nice and easy because there's uh, they actually there's a overlap, so it hangs in, which is quite cool. So they don't fall out. You can put both on and not worry about them coming out. A lot of these type clips, once you put it on, you've got to fight with dear life to like hold do both sides at the same time, but this is nice and easy. Gotta watch out for memory clearance. Yep, so I'm gonna go up a couple. That one on pretty easy. I'm gonna have to swap them around because of the orientation of the, the uh, cooler. So I'm gonna have to put it on this way. is not the end of the world, like so. Now there's a fan extension cable, which I've got to put globe into, which will then go to the motherboard. So install wise, I actually thought it was relatively easy to do. It's very, very similar to other coolers where it's a bracket from behind, washers, plates, cooler, screws. 
pretty much summed up what it is. Um, and that's not unusual these days. It wasn't the most difficult to do. The instructions were relatively clear. I'd say the one downside that I came across was uh, the extension cable for the two fans. I tried plugging both fans into it and then plugging that into the CPU fan header. And unfortunately, um, I got no response from either fan. So what I had to do was take that away. Unfortunately, on the motherboard I've got, there's a, a header for the, mother for the CPU fan and there's an additional ha a header there for a pump stroke additional fan. So I was able to connect those. Once I did that, everything worked like a charm. So that was the install. How did the cooler perform? Well, let's bring up the old scores and have a look-see. So base temps. The Scythe cooler came in with a base temp of 30 degrees, which is right in line with the top coolers that are reviewed so far. Um, the base temp is easily sort of a measurement you can ignore because, it, you know, but they keep the ambient temperature at 72. So, yeah, it's a good starting point. Base sound. Basically, this cooler was whisper quiet when it was idle. Uh, it was 34 uh, that I saw peak. Uh, when it was in uh, when it was idle, um, which is again in line with all the best coolers out there that I've reviewed so far. This is where we start getting very interesting because obviously with the additional fan, it's able to pump through a lot of cooling, and that's reflected in the score because the Fuma is the top scorer in Cinebench. It came through with a score of over four thousand four hundred. It's a top 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 result. Max temp. The Fuma peaked through testing at 69. The average temperature was just over 68, which is a truly great performance. Pretty much it was so reliable in terms of the temperature. There was, there was not much fluctuation at all. It was very, very dependable. Max sound, as you can see, it's in line with the Noctua NHU-12S. Again, one of the better performance. You, you're starting to see with all of these metrics that this cooler is appearing towards the top of the table on pretty much everything, which is a great performance. Scoring ranges, as you were, they're not changing. So um, let's see what the league table looks like. So league table wise, as you can see, it's right up where they're with top coolers. If it had got a slightly better bass sound, and I don't mean by much, it was very, very fractional, it would have been the champion. But as it is, it comes in in a very respectable second place, slugging it out with the very best of the coolers that I've tested so far. So in conclusion, this cooler is a top cooler. At $60, it's a little bit more expensive than some of the others that I've reviewed, but it is absolutely worth the investment. It's relatively easy to install, it top performs, and for me, it looks pretty good as well. No RGB, which you know may put some of you off because if you want all the glitz and bling and everything else, then you know, obviously it's missing that. But if you're just looking for solid performance, easy to install, Size-wise, it's a little bit on the large side. You maybe struggle to put it into a micro ATX and it definitely wouldn't fit in an ITX case. So something to keep in mind on that front. All right, so I hope that information was useful. As always, please like the video if you liked it. If you don't like it, please leave some feedback. And either way, if you did like it, if you want to leave some comments, by all means do. If you want to ask any questions on the cooler, if you want to compare it to any other coolers that I've not reviewed yet, or if you want to make any suggestions on any coolers to add to the league, please leave a comment down below. As always, please subscribe. Subscribers are always welcome. I'm trying to get to the Magic 1000 right now, which is a bit of a chore, but I'm trying to get there. So if you could subscribe, that would be more than welcome. And as always, take care.